We're coming to you today from the third floor of the State House. We call this segment Capital Spotlight because we put the spotlight on a member of the General Assembly and discuss some of the things they've been working on and how it might affect you, the Rhode Island citizen. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome back a gentleman who's appeared with us before. We're delighted to have him back, the Honorable Representative Raymond Hall. Representative Hall, good to see you. Good to see you, Dave, and thank you for welcoming me back. Well, it's good to have you back because um, last night we had the good fortune of uh, taping the Martin Luther King celebration at the Ebony Baptist Church and you're chair of the um, Commission for the Martin Luther King holiday here in Rhode Island and first of all let me just congratulate you on putting on a magnificent tribute well thank you very much it wasn't just myself it was the Commission that was established by legislation uh, I want to say it was tremendous even for myself as a first time chairing the uh, organization and it was wonderful you, you know I have to tell you too um, I realized last night, and I can't remember if it was you or one of the other speakers, but Rhode Island was really a leader um, in the nation in recognizing uh, Martin Luther King and the need to have a state holiday in order to recognize his contribution to our culture and society. And that is correct. That was brought up by one of the uh, committee people, uh, Frank Walker, and he gave us a little bit of history on how far we were ahead of most of the states. Now, now, let me ask you some of, uh, a question that I asked some of the other participants that were there last night. When you think back of Dr. King and you think of the many contributions that he made to our society and our way of life, when you think of his legacy, what comes to mind for you, Representative? What comes to mind is just the idea that where I'm at today. And one of the constituents, one of the committee people, brought up a fascinating uh, tribute in that uh, not just black people, but white people also were relieved of the burden that they don't have to look at it in one way, they can look at it in the whole way. So uh, that's a tribute to myself and, and to the people that I represent. And his work too uh, benefited um uh, so many more than just African-American people. Many minorities, women included, um, have received the benefit of that spotlight being uh, shined on inequality in our country. And, and again, many of us have benefited as a result of that. You're absolutely right. You couldn't have said it any better. You're absolutely right. Uh, the task and the mission is not over. Uh, we will continue on our journey, but we will continue with all, women, minorities, the poor, and the like. And again, too, um, as a, a message that was always intertwined in any situation where uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was speaking was the message of peace. That is correct. And, and one of the most things that I, that I really do appreciate about the Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King is the peace and what he brought to this nation because it was turmoil in the 60s. But peace came afterwards from it. Well, there was some turmoil, but the peace it's what, what, we, what we live today. Well, and, and really, uh, no matter how poorly demonstrators were being treated by the authority, uh, maybe by uh, private citizens, or even in some cases law enforcement, Dr. King's message was always the same, that you must not retaliate, that you must send a message of civil disobedience and peace. That whole agenda of uh, nonviolence, civil disobedience, is something that's amazing. And what our country lived through is tremendous. You know, in, in the uh, facility, the Ebenezer Baptist Church was a magnificent place to hold your event. You hold it there every year, full house, uh, big turnout, and uh, it was established in 1892, I learned, and it's a beautiful, beautiful church and a very spirited pastor, and uh, the music that you added to the program was really outstanding. It was outstanding, and I, I attribute that to the committee that I sit on, uh, being new to the committee, it was all done prior to my taking position as a chair, but what an excellent choice. Well, and I have to also uh, give kudos to the Master of Ceremonies. You did a magnificent job. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, and again, continued success as the 2012 session continues. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching. My name is Dave Barber from the third floor of the State Capitol. We call it Capitol Spotlight.